All right, so this is going to be my project uh, for my Java course I'm taking right now. Uh, what I developed is a, an ATM machine, uh, GUI. So you'll actually be able to see all the actions you want to take through an ATM. Uh, create customers, register accounts, make deposits, withdrawals, things like that uh, through the GUI uh, written in Java. So uh, I guess I'll go ahead and start the program. And as you can see, I've done a whole lot of uh, classes here to define it, um, mostly because I took a an approach to GUI design that basically has individual frames and panels for each uh, different window, uh, mostly because I did a lot of on-the-fly resizing. Um, so that's the route I took. So, of course, with an ATM, you want to have the customers log in. Um, so the first screen is the login screen. Uh, and it gives you a prompt for a customer ID and PIN number. Now, since we just started this program, um, you're going to see that there's nothing, uh, you know, what, what's your ID? What's your PIN number? We haven't made one yet. We don't have any customers. Uh, one thing I did do with this project is I made it persistent. So you'll see here in the console, uh, this is just for uh, pretty much my eyes only to see the console. Uh, the customer doesn't really need to see this stuff, but it'll say file not found creating p2.dat file. So if you look in our source folder here, you'll see that we have the p2.dat file. Now that's going to keep track of all our customers and all their accounts. Uh, so logically, the first thing we're going to want to do here uh, with this program um, is create a customer. So I did that just with a register button. So we'll go ahead and click there. And you can see it says enter name and pin. So you enter your de desired name. It's going to be Mike for me, and I'll do an easy pin number. There we go accept. So now what happened is we just created a customer. You'll see it here. It says customer created customer number uh, 101. That's going to be our customer ID number. Uh, that's going to be something uh, presumably if this was a real ATM machine, the customer would need to write this down, uh, commit it to memory or something because that's how they're going to log in every time. You, know, you need your ID and PIN number. You're not just going to go in there and type your name. It's going to be actually uh, ID'd. So um, I guess we'll go ahead and create another uh, customer. So we'll go ahead and do John and give him a really easy pin number too. And we'll go ahead and create a couple more just to display a few things I want to show you guys later on. And one more. Just do easy, easy, easy. Uh, this is basically to. Uh, show that I have sorting later on in the project, which we'll be able to see after I create some accounts and stuff, because there are certain ways you want to sort, like by balance of the accounts uh, and by name of the accounts, etc. So uh, we'll go over that in a bit. But as for the ATM machine, this is how we create accounts. So now you can see we have four customers created all the way from customer number 101 to 104. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and log into mine, and I'll just show you guys what happens when we do the wrong PIN number. Log in. Incorrect ID or password. So we want it to not allow you to log in, of course. You don't have the right PIN number matching the ID or name. So it can't be the name either. You have to actually enter the ID number. So we'll go ahead and log in. And now we have this. This is basically our main screen. This says, welcome to the CS49J banking system. It says, welcome, gives you your name, which is uh, attached to the customer ID number. So depending on which customer ID we enter, um, that'll, it'll display the name that corresponds with that customer ID. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open two accounts here. Uh, first, we'll open a savings account. And it says down here, displays in this little display window I created. Saving account created, account number 1001, account balance, nothing, the active, yes, and it has an interest rate of 5%. Uh, and the only, uh, for this project, I just made it so that your uh, savings accounts only have 5% interest. And if we create a checking account, you'll see that there's no interest here. So it says checking account created, account number 1002, account balance is zero, which you would expect that to be. Um, 
it does a lot down on the console. This is mostly for my debugging uh, purposes. Uh, so I'll go ahead and add some stuff here. Uh, give, we'll put some money in the account. So this will simulate putting a thousand dollars, which I wish I could just do to my account, into my savings account. And we hit make a deposit, and then you'll see here account balance updated. Account number one zero zero one, and account balance is now a thousand. And this is what we'd be expecting. I can I'll go ahead and deposit five hundred dollars into my other account. And you, this little drop down menu, you can select accounts, and it will go through all the accounts attached to that customer. Um, and there's some error checking there, like let's say we deposit deposit ten dollars, but we don't select an account. We'll say no account selected, so nothing happens. Um, another thing I can do is withdraw money. So I'm going to withdraw twenty bucks from that account with a thousand dollars in it. And you'll see it updates accordingly. All right, so go ahead and draw some more money there. Twenty dollars, one more one, and great. Uh, you may have noticed the numbers kind of skipped a little bit, skipped around a little oddly there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and click this account info button. Uh, so you can see all our accounts with our customer ID, our name here, uh, that are attached to this customer ID, and a log file. Um, so something that happened here that is kind of hard to see if you're not paying attention, it's its uh, interest was deposited to all my savings accounts. So this is all the transactions for this customer ID specifically. Um, so you'll see we deposited $1,000 into account 1001, deposited $500 into account uh, 1002. Uh, and when that happened, we hit uh, basically a limit. Uh, I just have a counter that says for every five transactions, and that includes creating accounts, um, it will uh, add 5% to your account. Uh, we can, you know, that's just to simulate an interest uh, addition to the account. Uh, the time frame was kind of random, but we set it to be every five transactions. Um, so you'll see this interest for the transaction ID, interest zero, so there's no real ID for that. It's just adding interest to customer 1001 to the savings account, $49, which is uh, expected. Um, and then for the next two are our two $20 withdrawals. Um, so that's just deposits and withdrawals from a single customer account. So now we can exit the ATM and log into another customer's account. So I'll go to 1002. Uh, let's see, I think I did 1111 was the PIN number. Yeah, got lucky there. Okay, so I want to open some accounts. You can see here it says Welcome John. So I am in the right account here. Uh, so I'll open a savings account. And why not open a checking account? And I will deposit $400 into the savings. And then I'll deposit $200 into the checking account I just created. And let's see here. Yeah, it does look like we had another increment of interest. I'll take a look though. Uh, so again, you can see both my savings and checking account. And yeah, right away we had an increment <laughs> of, uh, it added interest, but we hadn't done the deposit yet. Uh, so that's expected to be an interest addition of $0. Um, additionally, we can do transfers, which are pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to say from desired from amount. So I want to do $10. Uh, from my savings account to, and now you can see here that it has the option to transfer to any account. So I can go from this customer and uh, transfer money to his accounts. Uh, the good thing about this is I can't take money out of one of his accounts. It needs to be specific to my accounts. So the desired from location has to be in this uh, drop down menu. And desired to can be any account. So I'll go ahead and give that guy uh, some money there and I'll make that transfer. And we'll say account balance updated there, which is good. From account to account. This one I don't have access to, 
so I won't be able to see on the transaction. Yeah, you can see it in the um, transfers. All right. So then I will go to exit the ATM and I will check on my other guys. I just want to make a couple more um, accounts and then I'll go and show the sorting that I have. So I have maybe wrong. Okay. Zero, 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 zero. All right. I'll go ahead and open an account for this customer and the name is AAA. And I just have that uh, for sorting purposes. So I'll go ahead and put $10,000 in this account because this is my rich guy. And then that's great. It was a savings account, so he got the interest. 5% uh, on $10,000 is 500 bucks. That's good. Uh, and if we go and look in the info, you'll see that I have two uh, transactions log files. So you can see the interest and the deposit of $10,000. They happen simultaneously. So he got lucky, right? When he opened his account, he got $500, which uh, must be nice. All right, and then I'll go ahead and exit, and we'll try the last guy, I think. One. All right, cool. So I'll open an account for him, I'll open a checking account, I'll deposit $15,000, almost $150,000, that'd be nice too, into his checking account. Now you can see it's it's there. Uh, account info, you can see that he just has one account name, customer ID, his account checking, account number is correct, um, and his log file uh, should only be one transaction, which is good. We can see that. So uh, another thing we can do is we can close an account. Um, this just won't have a display anywhere, um, and it'll reduce the balance to zero, things like that. Um, it just basically sets a Boolean uh, value there. Uh, to false. Um, and then whenever you go through to look at all the accounts or anything, that account will not show up anymore because it's been closed. So now I have one secret menu that I put in here, and that's the administrative menu. So I'll go ahead and log into that, and we have the administrative tools. Um, so we can look at all our accounts in alphabetical order. This sorts all accounts uh, in alphabetical order. So we have A, J, M, Z, which is alphabetical, of course. Uh, we can also sort them highest to lowest balance. You see, starting with Z, that's obviously not in alphabetical order anymore. Um, and you can see the current balance is the highest balance at the top, lowest balance at the bottom. And we can also click on our transaction reports. And this displays every transaction that's happened in order with the timestamps and everything. Um, so you can see the ID 01 all the way through. Um, and when there's a, a transfer, you can see the transfer I, transaction ID stays the same, but you have two, um, two different transfers happening. So you can see we're taking the $10 out of this account for my one customer and then giving the $10 to this account on the other customer. Um, and then we can also list customer accounts. Now see, I clicked it and it says no customer selected. That means you have to go to this drop down window and select the first window. So we'll go, we'll see all those accounts, and all the information. Um, and these look like they're sorted by balance. Uh, they're actually sorted by um, account ID, I believe. Uh, they're sorted by balance in order. So let's go through and you can switch and see them all. All oh, right, I remember how it's sorted now. It's it's sorted um, by the account ID, so it will be like in numerical order, dependent on when the account was generated. So just to confirm that, I'll go ahead and log back into my first customer. One, two, three, four. It gets hard memorizing all these pin numbers. That's why I only have one in real life. Uh, and we'll go ahead and open another account, and we'll go ahead and deposit uh, $555 into that account. All right, now we exit, we'll go log back into the administrative mode. All right, 
and now we can take a look at it. And you can see they come in the account ID orders, 1001, 1002, and then 1007 as expected, uh, not sorted by balance. Uh, and that, for the most part, is uh, this entire project. Uh, the, the main purpose of this project was to generate array lists of uh, customer objects, and then each of those customer objects have their own array lists of account objects. And then we made that persistent, and we wrapped it in a GUI. Um, and we also added the uh, timestamps for every time there was a transaction. So when we're trans we're changing money throughout the accounts, that gets updated, and the transaction log is updated. Uh, and if you look through here, the last one will be the addition of the $555 to account 1007. Um, and the way I did that um, was through serialization. Um, and we have these two files here, uh, P2 data, that stores all the customer data, and P2 log data stores all the log file data. Um, and I can do reads on each of these when I need to, to get the, the data, uh, to get the all the customer objects uh, with their um, corresponding account objects. And then I can go to this P2 log data file, and I can look at all the transaction uh, transaction report data too. Um, and one thing that's cool is I can go ahead and stop this program and rerun it. And now I'm, I've started the pro program fresh. So, But I can go ahead and use the previous accounts that I had. Login, account info, there it is, Mike 101 type savings, balance is still there. It's all still there. All the transaction logs are still there too, which is what you would expect from a real ATM machine. I mean, if they lose power, they have to keep track of all that stuff because I mean, imagine a world where an ATM machine loses power and you no longer have any of your money in that account. That would be pretty, uh, pretty ruthless. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, my first GUI project in Java. Uh, second GUI project I've done, well, fully fleshed out. I've done a lot of small GUI projects, but this is one of the bigger ones. Um, and I like it. Java is a great uh, programming language. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, so with that said, um, I guess I have future plans. Uh, probably new algorithms for sorting. The sorting algorithms I used for this were fairly basic ones, um, and they work for smaller, smaller numbers of accounts. But if I go into bigger numbered accounts, it may actually take some time to go and do that sorting. Right now, I only had a, you know, maybe 20 transactions in a transaction log at most, uh, and a handful of customers. Sorting is fairly easy uh, in a handful of accounts. It's 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 not going to take a lot of time to sort those. But if I had millions of customers, uh, with all the different balances, all that, it would take a long time to sort. Um, probably the route I would want to go is a binary search tree. Um, and that is actually the next project I'm working on. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to look at my project. Have a good day.